are young, we run free. Stay up late, we don't sleep. Got our friends, got the night, we'll be all. He first saw her in his brother's eyes. Fabian and Vidal are harvesting during the late afternoon sun. Fabian stopped and take a glance to his brother as if he's too far to him. Vidal so stubborn, hard-headed. Fabian told to himself with anger as he cut stock after stock. Because Fabian knows how very good looking he is, how is so much admired and run after by all the women in town? Vidal on the side of the field stopped to wipe the sweat on his eyebrow. My brother is so fast, and yet he's not tired. Vidal wondered how his brother could work all day. How could harvest a field in a morning that required three men to finish it in a day? He had always been afraid of his elder brother. There was something terrible in the way he determined things and how he destroyed beautiful things. Harvest time is almost ended. Soon the planting season will be on us and we shall have need of many carabaos. Milia's father has fire. All you have to do is ask her and she will accept you anytime. During the conversation of the two brothers, there was a crunch of footsteps on dried soil. Fabian sensed the presence of person behind him. Ah, it's my model. How are you, Vidal? It was a voice too deep and throaty for a woman, but beneath it, one could detect a gentle, smooth nuance. Fabian is very affected with the voice. He feels his muscles tensing, but he did not turn to look at her. Miss Francia talked to Vidal about many things, while Fabian is listening and felt this pleasure of every sound of her voice. She was so near to Fabian. From now on, he must work for me every morning, possibly all day. Very well. Everything as you please. 
Then Fabian looked at her. He had never seen anyone like her. She was tall, with a regal unconscious assurance in her figure that she carried so well, and pale as if he just recovered from a recent illness. She has a strange loveliness. Yes, indeed, she's beautiful. Fabian's blood rushed hot to his face with a spray from head to foot. How splendid, how splendid. Miss Francia said, leaning to the master's arm and walking slowly away. The two brothers returned to their work but did not exchange a word. They stopped harvesting when sundown came. They walked on dried rice paddies till they reached the end of the rice fields. Fabian is so mad about his feelings towards Miss Francia. It's so awkward that he kept on thinking about her. He remembers the scent of her perfume. How she looked and smiled at him. Fabian wondered why Miss Francia's face is always before his eyes. A large moth with matted is resting at the leaves of a low tree. Vidal posed to pick it up, but before he could do so, Fabian already hit it with bundle of palais stalks. The moth fell down with broken wings. Why are you that way? What is my way? That, that way of destroying things that are beautiful like moths. Like, if the dust from the wings of a moth should get into your eyes, you would be blind. That's not the reason. Things that are beautiful have a way of hurting. I destroy when I feel hurt. To avoid the painful silence, Vidal talked whatever subject entered his mind, but gradually, Slowly the topics converged into one. He found himself talking about the woman who had come to them this afternoon in the fields. She was a relative of the master, a cousin I think. They call her Miss Francia, but I know she has a lovely hidden name like her beauty. She just recovered from a serious illness and she uses her leisure time by molding men out of clay or stone, using her fingers or chisel. One day, Vidal came into the house of the master with a message. Miss Francia is there. He was just the model for a figure she was working on. Miss Francia asked Vidal to pose for her. Brother, her loveliness is one I cannot understand. When one talks to her, forever it seems, in patio, many dreams, many desires came to me. I am lost. I am glad to be lost. Fabian could not see his brother's face, for in the deep darkness, he saw her face clearly and understood his brother. On the batalan of his home, two tall pagers were full of water. Fabian emptied one on his feet. He cooled his face and arms. His wife was cooling to the baby inside, and Fabian entered the house. Supper was already set on his table. I can't leave the baby. She was rocking a baby in a cradle made of blanket tied at both ends to the ropes hung from the ceiling. Fabian married Tinay because of the lands of widowed mother of Tinay. She was a small, nervous woman still with the lingering prettiness of her youth. Trining, his other child, a girl of four, was in the corner playing cyclot. That woman in the field this afternoon, a colored pastime by now. But the unrest, the fever she had left behind, was still on him. When I was your age, Vidal, I was already married. It is high time you should be setting down. There is Milia. I have no desire to marry her, nor anybody else. Just, just for five carabaos. At the door, where Vidal slept, he posed to watch his little niece. What a very pretty woman Trining is going to be. Look at her skin, white as rice grains just has, and her nose, what a height bridge. Mmm, she is going to be a proud lady. And what a deep dark eyes. Let me see. Why you have a little mole on your lips? That means that you are very talkative. You will wake up the baby Vidal. Vidal! We shall have to trim her head. I will do it before going out to work tomorrow. Morning came and Fabian do what he said. 
One night, Vidal told Fabian about the plan of Miss Francia, that she would leave within two days. She wanted Vidal to go to the city with her, where she would finish the figure she was working on. She will pay me more than I earn here and help us to get a position there, and I shall always be near her and live the life of a, a servant. What of that? I shall be near her always. Why do you wish to be near her? Why? Why? That sound resounded to the ears of Fabian as he visited Miss Francia. She smiled graciously at him while he made known himself. He did not expect she would remember him. I am the brother of Bidal. Ah, the man with his splendid arms. He did not know how he worded his thoughts, but he succeeded in making her understand that Vidal could not possibly go with her, that he had to stay behind on the fields. To marry the girl whose father has five carabaos, you see, Vidal told me about it. That is only a reason to cover up something that should not be known. My brother has wronged this girl. There will be a child. I understand. You shall not go with me. Your brother should never know. You have to told me the real reason. Why he should not go with me. I will hurt him, I know. I have to finish this statue before I leave. The arms are still incomplete. Would it be too much to ask you to pose for just a while? While she smoothed the clay, patted it, and molded vein, muscle, arm, stole the firmness, the strength of his arms to give to the lifeless statue, it seemed as if life left him, left his arms that were being copied. She was lost in her work and nothing neither the twilight stealing into the patio nor the silence brooding over them. When Pavian returned, Vidal was at the Batalan brooding over a crumpled 20 peso bill in his hands. The haggard, tired look in his young eyes was as gray as the skies above. Soon, all your sampaguitas and camias will be gone, my dear aunt, because I shall be seeing Melia every night and her father. He watched Fabian cleansing his face and arms and later wondered why it took his brother that long to wash his arms. Why he was rubbing them so hard.
like a G6. Like a G6, 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 like a G6